Hello everybody and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5 and today we're taking a look at the brand new Exorcist class. Now this class is actually inspired by AKA Pearly who put together this original concept for the class and then with Pearly's permission was taken over by a huge and incredibly talented team of modders here uh, headed by Anonymous Koala of Koala's Creature Collection, Shay, and No Dap Young. And thus far, what this team has been able to put together in this modded class is something really special. It just feels like, thematically, a really appropriate fourth wheel to the already holy rollers in this game. Obviously, it's a religious class, and therefore it has some great synergies uh, with other religious classes. It also comes with some fun and new ideas, things that we just haven't really seen quite yet. Uh, it also is adaptable in terms of the fact that it fits with Mark groups. It does very good against Unholy and Eldritch. So we'll get into all of that, but let's talk about the backstory of this class a little bit. And according to the description, a powerful, disruptive combatant, the Exorcist calls upon his unwavering faith in combat to smite his foes, condemning them with holy magic. A lifetime of servitude has made him terrifyingly effective at banishing unholy monstrosities and eldritch evils. His knowledge of prayers allows him to fortify his teammates by rallying them to his zealous cause. A religious offensive support, the Exorcist has a varied skill set that focuses on disrupting enemies and buffing allies. His unending war against demon kind, which he claims was spoken to him by the light itself, has led this religious firebrand to the hamlet, where he seeks to put his expertise in banishing otherworldly evil to good use. And thanks to the talented work of Menlo, the artist behind the Snake Charmer modded class, we're also blessed with a really excellent comic strip, which begins up here in the top left, uh, and we see a very dark and dilapidated, sort of evil-looking shack. The Affliction Crown made out of the different branches and things surrounding the shack here, which is a really nice touch. We then see the exorcists beginning to perform the exorcism uh, on a woman tied to a bedpost here, her hands looking fairly claw-like. We see a close-up of just how demonic and deranged she is now in this shot. The exorcist preparing to move forward and begin the ritual. One of the ropes holding her down is broken. Her arm now free, she reaches over and grabs the throat of one of the exorcists, throwing him across the room against the wall, ostensibly killing him. Now we see the reaction of the other exorcist jumping into action, continuing the ritual, a full shot of light's power at work here uh, as the ritual comes to a close and the evil within leaves the body. It's a really nice sort of ending here as uh, Maxwell turns and just sort of has a virtuous moment down here hugging the good book. His work has been done. The power of light compels you. It's a really nicely done comic here by Menlo, and it just is a nice sort of tip of the hat to the original 1970s film, The Exorcist. I mean, you just are kind of brought right back into that bedroom where you just hear them chanting, the power of Christ compels you. 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 In our case, the power of light compels you, uh, but just a nice touch and uh, really great stuff. Now before we jump into an ability breakdown on the Exorcist here, let's just take a quick look at the stats. Uh, for the most part, this is kind of a squishier class in general. It has mediocre dodge and HP. Of course, we have hard skinned here on this Exorcist, so our prop 10% is not bad. That sort of helps. Speed 5, which is reasonable. I guess for the most part, sort of average stats. It does sort of feel squishier than other classes in a lot of respects. Damage 4 to 7, crit modifiers low. No accuracy modifier. We take a look at the resistances here. We are actually up to a 70% stun resist at apprentice level. And that is because we are being benefited here by, there it is, the Altar of Light. So Crusader, Vestal, Flag, and Exorcist makes total sense. Get healing skills and stun resist, which is quite nice. Fairly low on the Blight and Disease resist. The average death blow resist 67. Not much trap disarm. And then sort of average move, bleed, and debuff resists. Also interesting to note about the Exorcist is that it has normal virtues and afflictions currently, and its crit buff is kind of interesting. If it was, it doesn't have much of a crit modifier here, but on a couple of its damaging abilities, if you were to land a crit, uh, you actually debuff the entire enemy team 
for damage done, which I think is a nice touch. That's sort of different than most of the crit buffs that we have seen post Color of Madness Critsmas. So just as a sort of brief preface to looking at each ability for the Exorcist, there's actually a lot of really interesting output and utility in this class. You do have two sort of primary aggressive damage dealing abilities here, which we'll talk about. But then you also have stun and knockback. You have mark synergy as well as de-stealth and torch buff. You have heals, but you also have clear stun and clear mark. Clear corpses and stress heal, which is quite fun. And then you have uh, a very interesting limited per use sort of buff and Aegis, which is quite powerful. So let's start off, though, with Chastise, uh, which is the first aggressive ability. It can only be used in rank 1 or 2. It targets enemies in rank 1 or 2. It is a melee attack with an accuracy base 80, crit modifier plus 3%, and it gets extra crit... Uh, at level 1, 4% crit versus Eldritch and Unholy. It's going to perform very well in the Ruins and in the Cove. Basically the only melee ability that the Exorcist has, and it essentially just slaps somebody with the good book. So the next aggressive ability that the Exorcist has is Word of Power. Word of Power is usable only in rank 3 or 4, and it targets any enemy in any position. It is a ranged attack with accuracy base 85. It has a damage modifier of minus 33%, a crit modifier of plus 7. It does 33% extra damage versus Eldritch and Unholy, and importantly, it buffs self Word of Power plus 15% damage. So what's fun about this is this is a obviously backline ranged attack to anywhere, extra damage and a decent crit level versus Eldritch and Unholy. So again, powerful in Ruins and Cove for the most part. Ah, but it's ramping, right? So Word of Power plus 15% damage. It seems like in Endless Mode or in longer fights or boss fights, you could spam this thing and actually have it do some pretty excellent ramping damage. So now we get to take a look at the first bit of utility coming out of the Exorcist, and that is with Vade or Wade Retro. The uh, canon name for the Exorcist is Maxwell, and he speaks Latin. Vade or Wade Retro Satana literally means Stand Back Satan. So I believe that is the pronunciation, but this has two uses per battle only, uh, which is nice because it is a powerful ability. It is only usable in rank 2, 3, or 4, and it only targets enemies in position 1 or 2. It is a ranged attack with accuracy base 85. It does no damage, but it is a knockback 3 and stun utility, which is quite powerful. It also buffs torch plus 6 and debuffs the target for minus 5 speed. So the speed loss, the knockback and stun make this a really powerful ability, especially in dungeons uh, where... You know, shuffle is more powerful, so you're thinking the ruins or maybe the wield, where you really want to get to backline enemies and take the frontline prot enemies and just kind of get them out of the way. But the fact that it also stuns and reduces speed almost guarantees that that enemy is just not going to be acting in front of your team for the next couple rounds. And so the fact that it has limited uses per battle, I think, is quite fine. Next up, then, is the Mark Synergy with Perdition. Perdition can be used in any position, and it targets any position. It is a ranged ability that has an accuracy base 85, no damage again. It bypasses and de-stealths an enemy. It marks an enemy. It buffs Torch plus 6, and it debuffs the target for crits received plus 8%. So this is a really powerful mark ability. It calls out any target, says you are no longer stealth, you are now marked, and you have a higher chance of being crit. That makes this class really synergistic with a lot of different mark classes. The extra crits received is quite fun here. But interesting to note that the Exorcist doesn't actually capitalize on mark damage himself. So a lot of utility out of this ability and uh, also pretty fun.
So next in line then is the real heal and support ability coming from the Exorcist, and that's Benediction. Benediction can be used in any position. It has a small heal of two to two, but it comes with the utility of clear horror, clear stun, and clear marked target all at the cost of debuff self minus three speed. So, you know, it's a pretty costly debuff on self, uh, but a lot of power coming out of this ability. I don't think the heal is that great. You could definitely trinket the heal here and make this kind of a nice off heal. Certainly, the ability to just heal somebody off a of death's door is always nice with classes like the Plague Doctor or somebody just provide that little bit of utility. Uh, but the fact that this removes horror and stun and mark just makes your group slightly more survivable, especially as you get into the late game, where that stuff kind of becomes more relevant. So next in line then might be my favorite ability of the Exorcist so far, which is Ashes to Ashes. It is usable in rank 2, 3, or 4. It targets the entire enemy team is a ranged ability with an accuracy base 95, does no damage. Enemy party clear all corpses and plus 50% stress healed per corpse, which is really interesting. Also self buff minus 10% stress damage received. Other heroes stress minus two at a 73% chance at level one. So this is a really kind of fun thematic idea. The idea that you have piled up a bunch of corpses on the enemy team and it's now time for the exorcist to just clear all that noise, get all of that rubble and gore out of the way, and by doing so, uh, sort of performing a last rites, if you will. Just, you know, cleaning things out, uh, stress healing the group, and that is getting a lot of benefit depending on how many corpses are cleared. Now, for the most part, corpse clear is not something that is really that interesting in base game. It has a lot more utility in something like Pitch Black Dungeon. Uh, but it can do a really great job at bringing backline enemies up to the front if you were unable for some reason to focus them out first. So last then in the Exorcist kit is Proselytize. Can only be used once per battle, can be used in any position, it gives an ally one Aegis block. It also buffs that target plus one speed, 5% crit, and 20% damage versus marked, but debuffs that target for minus 10 dodge. So this is a very powerful and interesting ability here. I really appreciate that it only has one use per battle. Uh, Aegis is very powerful. The fact that you can just throw an Aegis on somebody uh, and just completely prevent damage has a lot of implications against certain boss fights, uh, certain moments where somebody's close to death's door. So limiting that, I think, is important. It also comes with some nice buffs, though, and the 20% damage versus marked, again, just works right into the mark synergy of perdition, and I really like that idea. The debuff of minus 10 dodge, not the most painful, um, but it sort of tells you that we're going to make this ally, you know, block all damage coming in in the next hit, but then after that, less survivable, although it is buffed to do more damage overall. So on the surface, I feel like this is a class that almost looks like you could be rewarded for changing up the kit uh, and swapping abilities as you move through a dungeon or depending on circumstance similar to Muscarine's Hollow to a degree but I think it really comes down to composition for the most part this is a class that plays very well with other religious classes and if you have anybody in your party that has Mark Synergy you might as well take Perdition and you might think about also taking Proselytize uh, Perdition with the Mark Target Bypass Stealth Extra Crits Received alone makes this pair so well with Bounty Hunters and Arbalists or modded classes like Marvin Seo's Seraph. Having the off heal is definitely not a bad take if you're concerned about 
you know, taking on too much damage, AOE hits, you're going to be getting stunned or horrified depending on certain dungeons you go to, the level of dungeon you go to. Uh, the ability to clear mark obviously has nice implications against certain bosses, so that's quite nice. So, I, I don't know, I think that ultimately, if, if you want to be playing this class aggressively, you're going to think, I think for the most part, about Word of Power. Chastise is interesting, and it does have that, bon that bonus damage against Eldritch and Unholy, but for the most part, it feels like you're f more free playing in rank 3 with Word of Power and ramping the damage and output of Word of Power over and over and, and really hitting Eldritch and Unholy hard. Then you can sort of combo in uh, the knockback and stun plus torch, if, especially if, again, you are in dungeons like the Ruins or the Wield. And then maybe if you have Mark Synergy, you're thinking about taking Perdition and Proselytize. Or if you're really worrying about this being a stress healer and you want to reach backline enemies, definitely take Ashes to Ashes and maybe throw in something like Benediction to, you know, better deal with survivability. Now, in terms of the camping skills for the Exorcist, these are actually a lot of fun. Uh, they are pretty interesting. There are four unique camping skills, and that starts with Rallying Sermon. A time cost four is expensive, but all companions get plus two speed and 10 accuracy. If religious, another one speed and another five accuracy. So again, ton of religious synergy here, really great with things like Marvin Seo Seraph, with uh, other religious classes like the Crusader. But, you know, for a time cost four seems reasonable if you're going to be buffing speed and accuracy to the entire party for four battles. Uh, obviously, accuracy much more important, especially as you get later in game and things become much harder to hit. The next is Ablution. Another time cost four. Self only produces one holy water, heals one companion for 25% of their HP, and removes a disease blight and bleeding so we have disease removal here with this character and that is pretty useful i like that this is another time cost four it's expensive uh, the fact that you get a holy water is sort of interesting and thematic it's definitely more useful in the ruins uh but you know healing a companion for 25 percent hp is nice and the fact that you have a disease resist is especially nice when going into late game or certain dungeons where you know maybe like the warrens where disease is pretty rampant that brings us then to Hollowed Ground, another time cost four. This is the Exorcist Prevent Nighttime Ambush, and it also buffs the party for 15% stun, debuff, and move resist so long as the torch is above 75 over the next four battles. So, uh, you know, nice to have Prevent Nighttime Ambush in groups. That option is always useful. Uh, especially as you get into later game, things become a little bit more tricky. But having stun, debuff, and move resist is a nice little bonus there. This class, like the Vestal, buffs Torch, so thematically it makes sense also that these are benefiting from higher Torch Light. Last but not least is my favorite of his camping abilities, and this is definitely really intense. The Rite of Exorcism, time cost four, all companions plus seven stress, but one companion, if afflicted, suffers 40% of their HP, but also minus 80 stress. So this is interesting. It is, again, the fourth camping ability in a row that is time cost four, but it is very specialized. If you have an afflicted companion, especially if you just became afflicted and your stress is just hovering around 100, you can stress out the rest of your team and take away almost half of their HP, but you can drop that stress down minus 80, and then maybe have a Jester in the group play a couple rounds of Stress Pasito, or stress heal this and manage this back down to zero and just fully remove the affliction is pretty powerful. I love that it's punishing. I love that it punishes the rest of the group and that it takes a lot of HP. I mean, this just conjures the mental image of actually performing uh, an exorcism ritual on one of your group mates, which is funny, but also kind of awesome. The power of Christ compels me. The power of Christ compels you. Now, in terms of trinketing the exorcist, uh, we are a little bit early in the game here because there is a trinket pack that looks phenomenal that is still due to be really fine-tuned and released for this class, then that stuff is really going to focus around a lot of what the Exorcist already does. Extra damage versus unholy, extra stress healing, and that kind of stuff. So I think that stuff is going to be really fun to mess around with and play with once that's done and released here, due out in the next couple weeks. But in the interim, I think you could probably uh, get away with really benefiting from certain trinkets that just 
make this class a little bit more survivable, benefit from high torch light already since this is sort of like a Vestal buffing torch light uh, and things work that way. So you could go with a camouflage cloak and make this slightly more survivable. You could do a sun ring even though this was nerfed to oblivion. The extra damage and accuracy is certainly not bad. You could go the route of say something like Junius Head or an Ancestor Scroll and improve the overall support utility of this class, increasing the stress healing and healing done. Uh, that seems to me to maybe be a little bit silly. I do feel like that is going to have more value as the game goes on and as this character levels up a little bit. So, you know, another option then is maybe to go for the Ethereal Crucifix and just increase the damage done versus Eldritch. You're already getting that, you know, plus 33% damage with Word of Power against Eldritch here. So if you were to take this character into the Cove uh, and maybe, you know, really lay out on the bosses, you could do that. 33 plus another 25 is not bad and then ramp this up. So that is an option in the interim. But I think that for the most part... I think both Shay and Koala have mentioned to me that this class feels a little undertuned in the early levels and then starts to feel a lot more powerful as you get some upgrades into them. That is definitely not uh, uncommon for certain classes in this game. And so I would encourage you to feel it out and try it out yourself. And then hopefully once those trinkets come out, they're going to be a lot of fun to play with. Many congrats to Anonymous Koala, Nodep Young, and Shay and the entire modding team who helped test and develop this, translate it, etc. You guys have done something really special here. I'm absolutely in love with this, and I cannot wait to stream it over the next year. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more mod spotlights and overviews and everything at Darkest Dungeon. And if you should have any questions about this class, you know to leave those in the comments section below. I can't wait to hear how you guys are using this class and what your thoughts on it are so far. Thanks, everybody. Take care.